So now it's time to uh, listen to Alexander von Frankenberg. He's a co-CEO of uh, Germany's biggest investor called Hightech Gründerfonds. Welcome back to EcoSummit. I like his... <laughs> and he's a man of action, and that's why uh, your Twitter handle is called Just Do It, Alex. <laughs> Yeah, well, um, thank you for uh, giving the opportunity to present a little bit what we've done in the cleantech space. High Tech Gründer Fund, I think we stand for three things. We have three things to offer. Obviously, uh, money for, for startups and um, uh, lots of support. Um, we also have to, uh, to offer for investors and corporates a huge portfolio of very, very uh, successful, attractive uh, companies. And we also have uh, learned quite a bit out of more than 1,200 transactions, uh, um, lots of experiences, lots of knowledge, uh, a huge network that we uh, offer to share. So <clears throat> we've been named the most active uh, investor in not only Germany, but also Europe. And I'll show you a little bit what we've done. So we closed more than 400 seed investments. The first one was November 2005, so almost 10 years now. now. And I think uh, we were very successful, our entrepreneurs, and of course, uh, a little bit with our help, in raising follow-on funding. And we're approaching 1 billion euros in external funding. So what happened after the seed funding was used up? Who, uh, uh, is there any follow-on funding? And the answer is yes. So there's very, very good uh, follow-on funding opportunities. We ourselves invested a little bit more than a quarter, a billion, into our portfolios, initial investments, a little bit in follow-on funding ourselves. And um, we sold almost 50 companies, and we're approaching our 100th failure. Not all insolvencies, but also a few companies that we sold for a very low price. 18, not so many, but uh, it's growing. 18 cash millionaires, founders who sold their companies and became cash millionaires. And uh, a huge uh, line of entrepreneurs lined up to become uh, cash millionaires in the future. So uh, quite a number of paper millionaires. So if you look at the portfolio, <coughs> which is uh, currently 260 active companies, if you look at the portfolio, where's our clean tech investments? And we structured our portfolio into three um, sub-segments, like our investment team. And the first is hardware. And there's lots of clean tech investments hidden in the hardware portfolio. And I'll point out the segments just very briefly. Obviously, mobility uh, is, is um, clean tech. Then there's a few uh, clean tech related software companies in Berlin, Econtens, and uh, we sustain, we have found he just did a very nice B round. Logistics, um, uh, transporting things more efficiently. Then uh, two interesting segments recycling, energy management, metrology, mess technic, sensors, um, energy generation, of course, and storage. And then uh, in our medtech and life science portfolio, there's a very small uh, clean tech related segment, green, green biotech. And then in our software portfolio, there's also a little bit mobile interaction, uh, which uh, basically relates to, to logistics. So what's interesting in looking at the portfolio, how does it perform? And we have, uh, you know, we hear quite a, um, you know, a few trends, uh, and I would like to shed a little bit of light on the actual performance of uh, a few segments. Um, so I clustered them in three segments. Very well performing is energy management. It's maybe the best segment in the whole HGGF portfolio, and we're very confident in realizing a multiple of five uh, out of these 12 companies. So it's, um, it's, and it's not just one company, it's, it's uh, almost all of the 12 companies in that segment that perform really, really well. Software as a service platforms, Obviously, software as a service, scalable, uh, recurring revenue, low churn, that are clean tech related. Uh, I mentioned we sustain and, and eco-intense. We're performing really well. And uh, mess technic, sensors, uh, are performing really well. It's a uh, not so sexy segment, but uh, we sold five companies in the last 12 months out of that portfolio with multiples between two and four. And we have lost, uh, I think, just one, very few companies. So the overall performance is very good. Average segments that are, uh, you know, some companies are performing well, some are performing not so well, is mobility solutions. 
you know, mobility solutions. Logistics, we have seen logistics companies, especially when they have a high hardware content that you know, have a hard time to, to get traction and, and to generate revenue and profit. And uh, recycling also is a little bit difficult. Not so well performing segments is energy generation. Uh, energy generation, obviously, there is huge established uh, competition, not just large companies, but also very efficient energy production. So, uh, although it's hard to know, but energy produced by, by coal is just very cheap. So, if you are an energy generating company, I think um, you have to climb a you know, huge um, cost, you have, you have to overcome a huge cost disadvantage. Energy storage, sorry, Son Battery, I think you're a great company. Unfortunately, not in our portfolio, but our experience is very mixed with energy storage. And then sensor networks, not sensors, but sensor networks, Internet of Things, we have a failure rate of 80%. So uh, we did uh, five investments for our debt, and one is performing well. So uh, you know, we hear Internet of Things. We have been hearing that for 10 years, and we haven't really seen very good business models around that. They, they have been stuck in the project business and, uh, and uh, very difficult to scale. So <clears throat> that was just a few experiences looking bad and the data back and the database is not huge, so it might not be statistically irrelevant, but I, I, I just would like to, with that slide, show you that there's a few trends that are, everybody talks about and it's, it's very hip and very hype, and our experience um, is, is mixed in some areas. So what have we learned? Obviously, um, there's uh, disruption provides huge opportunities for startups. And disruption can come from, of course, technology, can also become from changes in the market, and also from regulation. Um, and clean tech maybe offers uh, all three avenues for dis disruption, Te technology-driven, market-driven, and of course, uh, regulatory uh, disruptive changes. And those opportunities are more attractive the larger and the less flexible lar established companies are. What is key, and I think that's very often underestimated by technology startups, is um, access to market and um, generating revenue. Uh, quite a few companies have difficulties accessing the market, and then, especially with hardware-driven companies, sometimes very difficult to scale. So access to market and scaling, maybe not initially in the first two years, but eventually are very important. Uh, and, and what we think, you know, of course, what you need to have is a a very significant USP. And the, the key challenge that we very often see is that a small feature is considered to be a USP, but it's, it's not really. Low initial burn rate, I think that's very important because we believe that it takes some time to find exactly the right focus. So initially starting slow in the search of the right focus helps quite a bit. Moderate capital requirements, we've been very successful raising capital, but raising more than you know, five to 10 million million becomes very hard. It might be a very difficult case for seed investors, also the founders, because if valuations don't really go up in the end, then having raised uh, lots of capital might be very difficult you know, in the end when the exit comes up. So being capital efficient, uh, Jan said it, I think is it's very important. Slow, capital efficient, clear focus, market driven. And overall, we think that Germany, especially in the clean tech space, provides a huge opportunity and huge advantage compared to other areas, especially uh, the very, you know, hyped uh, Silicon Valley. So those are the few learnings. Who are we? Um, you know, our investment team is, is large, 27 investment managers. Uh, and the hardware uh, subset of the, of the team is focusing on the clean tech investments. Uh, we have lots of tech know-how, five um, physicists with PhDs, um, and, and very experienced investment managers. And that's it. Uh, I'm here all day, except for a few hours in the afternoon, and then I'm here in the, in, in the afternoon. Happy to answer questions, uh, and hopefully uh, you know, keen to meet other young startups and other investors and corporates. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alex. I have one question for you. What is your uh, typical deal? to get started? I think, how much do you invest and what type of deal is it exactly? So the maximum amount we can invest initially is half a million euros, and there's two ways where we invest. We invest with a convertible loan at a 
with no valuation, where we take 15% of the capital, and then the convertible loan helps us to maintain the 15% stake. That's one way, and we've done um, 350 investments in, in that fashion. And the other way is to invest with a, together with a private investor uh, at a you know, normal valuation. So in the, first, uh, in the first way, we can invest by ourselves. We don't need a private investor. Um, we can just invest just by ourselves, maybe along with business angels. In the other way, we need a private investor. Yeah. And you know, uh, VNT management sitting there in the audience, uh, three partners, two Finnish guys, one Austrian guy. <laughs> they found uh, We Sustain last yeah. year at this event. Yeah. It's yeah. public record. Yeah. I okay. think they should pay you a bonus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why they sponsor EcoSummit because they really see value in it and yeah. they get it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you very much, Alex. Thank you. <clears throat>